Well, hello, YouTube. On this podcast, we'll be stepping away from our usual look at movies to looking at a new game, Batman Arkham City, the sequel to the excellent Batman Arkham Asylum. And if you want this to general, how is this game? It is awesome! Go out and buy it if you have not. If you're sitting on the fence for some reason, go out and buy it. There's no reason not to. This is... One, probably one of, the, I think, the best comic game I've ever played, and I th- previously thought the first one, Arkham Asylum, was the best. This has surpassed it. And I think it's actually might be one of the best open-world games. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar which with the game, which will be kind of weird since you're reading a review for it, or watching a review, I should say, uh... uh, Arkham City picks up about six months after where Arkham Asylum left off. The Asylum has now been permanently closed. Hugo Strange has been given a new... ripped off from Escape from New York style prison where they literally walled off a huge section of Gotham City and just stuck all the criminals in there. Uh, They really were watching some John Carpenter movies before they decided to... To, to do this. Uh, although apparently even in Arkham Asylum when they were making that game they had ideals for what they would do for a sequel. Uh, because there's a little easter egg about Arkham City. Uh, which makes me wonder what the hell they're going to do for a third game and I'm expecting a third game actually because this thing is it's it's so successful. It's critically acclaimed. It's financially successful. The, the actual gaming public loves it and for very good reason. I was thinking of trying to find fault with this game, and I was trying to find, you know, just one or two to point out that it may keep everything balanced, and I was completely at all. I could not think of a single complaint. Uh, a couple of the Riddler uh, quiz, uh, Riddler puzzles I haven't quite yet fully figured out, but that's part of the, that's the objective. It's... You know, some of them are easy, yes, but some of them are supposed to be hard, and you're supposed to take some time to f- experiment and figure out how to solve them. So that's really not a fault of the game. I also haven't spent a huge amount of time on it. I probably would have had this game beat and therefore review it a lot earlier, but I, you know, I've had some, I've had work to do. Uh, I have friends and social things to attend to, so I did not get to play uh, the game as much as I would have liked to. And thus, I've beat it now, a week after I've gotten it. When I probably could have had this thing beat in the first two, three days, if I really sat down and just dedicated myself to it. But, there's also, that's just beating the main single-player stuff. I've done a lot of the side missions, I've done a good deal of the Riddler trophies, but that's also a good point with this game, is there is a ton, and especially for an open-world game, there is a ton of side quests. Uh, always a problem sometimes with these uh, with these games is, and I'm referring to open world games is that there is yeah there's your main objective and then you have a ton of side quests. Half the time in an open world game the side quest sucks and you don't want to do them. Uh, the other half, is, there's too much to do or it's too easy to get distracted from the single player campaign and to do the side quests. The Dark Knight here in Arkham City really does balance the two uh, very well. Because while there's a ton of side quests and they're fun to do, you kind of it flows naturally with the side qu- uh, with the main storyline. It's weird how they kind of very they mesh so well together. In a lot of ways, it's adding all this pressure, kind of like how you would expect Batman to have, where Oh, we gotta find Deadshot. He's killing people over here. Oh, well, we have to figure out what's going on with Hugo Strange. You're just being piled on with all this stuff, and yet it doesn't feel... It feels overwhelming, but in a way that the plot is expecting Batman to be overwhelmed. Uh, they really kind of incorporate... It's really interesting how they incorporated the side quests into the overall mission, and they kind of put the, the story emphasis. The story emphasis of Batman is being overburdened, and this is being... You know, one of the big things he's got to do is figure is solve everything here. So, unlike a lot of games that just kind of treat each side quest like it's the only thing in the world, 
this really does add, and it's really good balancing. Uh, some people do not like the fight mechanics because they're, they're oversimplified. You know, this is not Street Fighter, guys. Uh, I love that simplicity. The simplicity makes it very fun, and it's not about achieving weird combos. Like, uh, there are some people that love getting these obscure combos. The fighting in this game is all about your your timing and when to do, when to use stuff in the right moments. Uh, and I prefer that type of fighting style that they use here. And there's also choose a not. You can go pray. Uh, this game really does offer you a lot of as it should for an open world game, and something that I think Rockstar, which we might be getting to, you know, when their trailer is out for the next one, really forgot. And I think a lot of open world games now have this problem. Where they don't let you... Every event is almost planned, it's planned out for you how you're supposed to solve it. And an open world game should not be doing that. Now, of course, there's stuff inside where you're going to have to go through certain things. But this game really lets you, as Batman, decide how you're going to take on an objective often. Uh, if... There are several points where you have snipers, and there will be snipers in different areas. You can decide how you're going to come at these guys, uh, what positions you want to go after, after first. Are you going to take the guys that are lower at, uh, lower down first? Let's say there's some on a, a couple buildings, but they're further out. Are you going to take the guys that are closer to the center? Maybe a little bit more risky going after them, but if you can take out the snipers on a higher building, uh, you can then proceed to, you know, have your ice grenades and freeze a couple of the guys there, you just can decide you're going to fight some of them. You know, one of the things I always like to do is if I can get down to three people during these prey missions, I they give you this cool little toy, toy that will disable your enemy's guns. It jams them. I don't know how that would work scientifically. You know, It's not like a gun uses a radio control to fire, but it's Batman. I buy it. Uh, but that adds the element where you can bring back into fighting, uh, getting down and just punching. So if you can get down to three guys, you can disable two of the guns. So you can actually do this even down to four. Disable two of the guy's guns, freeze the other guy with a grenade, and fight the only guy left with an active gun. And by the time you beat him, and you, know, you drop down, knock him out, and you can fight the other two. You can also try to go around and take each one out individually using silent takedowns. And there's elements, there's there's points where you're doing the standard prey stuff that you saw in the first one, where you're in a big open room with lots of little nicks and hi, uh, crannies to hide in, where you can really choose what what type of even you know silent takedowns are you can do. Are you going to attack from above using like gargoyles and such? Are you going to go uh, behind walls, planting bombs, or sneaking up behind someone and taking them out that way? Uh, it's really open, it, it, it allows for people to have very different play styles, and that's what an open world game should be. Uh, now, I should really talk about, uh, speaking of how the open world is, this is also very different from an, most open world games, in that it's very close. So what I mean by that is, the camera in this is only about, ooh, I think about 15, 20 feet away, maybe, possibly less, uh, from your main character. Uh, where normally, if you if you have most open world games, they're almost like 50 feet, 30 feet, uh, 30, 40 feet away. Uh, now, if that seems rather trivial, oh, it's you know, this is how far you know. That, what I'm talking about is how big on your screen is your main character. That seems rather trivial if you think about it, but it really does. That fundamentally changes how the games are played. And in this case, it also means you're able to go inside and have really great indoor environments. Normally, in an open uh, in a game that is an open world game, if you go inside, it, the the system that's set up has a very hard time because it's you're purposely put back more. The camera is put back more in order to show off this wide environment to have you know normally just running gun type stuff, not very detailed. While Batman, by having that closer camera. One, it's a lot easier to go inside, so there's a ton of missions that are indoors that all of a sudden are very easy to do, are not a distraction, don't feel like the game is breaking, feel like very natural extensions of the game because it's not like the camera is changing at all, and it's not like you're having new mechanics thrown in for an indoor environment. 
And also, because it's all designed to be very close, it all looks fantastic. This game is beautiful. It looks... It's highly, highly detailed. Uh, the character models are excellent, uh, unlike most open-world games that I've seen where the character models are very basic, because you're not supposed to be that close. You're not really getting a chance to see them. The environments, like, if you go, if you go down an alley, there's you can read the graffiti on the wall. You can see the grit in the between the bricks, all that stuff, stuff you normally wouldn't see in an open world game, especially you know, looking at something, even though I love the series Just Cause, where yeah, the, the environments are not that detailed. One, because the world is just so big. I would say on average, this, this game does appear to be a, have a little bit of a smaller map than most open world games, but it doesn't exactly feel that closed in because, like I said, it's a game that takes you much closer to your characters, so you're not seeing the expansiveness you would in other games, but you still have the feeling that it's all over the place. Now, it is true, by the end of the game, it does feel a little bit close together. You kind of know where literally every single building is, but it takes, because it does that till at the end of the game, it's not too much of a problem. And, and I mean, it's still blocks and blocks of open city space for you to run around and then fight, and you spend most of your time flying around anyway. But you can go down, walk around. People will randomly decide to attack you because, you know, it makes perfectly sense after seeing Batman beat the shit out of a group of 20 guys that you and another guy are just going to walk up and fight and beat me. <laughs> uh, as for the story, the story is excellent. Uh, I really... Normally I don't have any problems talking about spoilers and reviews because... My interpretation is nowadays most people watch reviews, not necessarily to know whether something is good or not, but to see what other people thought of the same thing. However, I know with video game reviews, some people watch these before they finish the game. And this is what I'll say. For this being the final performance of Mark Hamill as the Joker, for those of you that don't know, Mark Hamill has said that this will be his last foray into the Joker character, what a way to go out. It is there's a twist at the end. I'm not giving anything else away when it comes to that, but it this is a proper send off for Hamill's Joker. And inevitably he will find something else to be in. And then no one will realize he was the voice until way later. As he seems to be. Uh I really don't want to get into this plot line or reveal anything with that, so I'm kind of avoiding that. Although it's very well. It's the characters are all there. The, everyone seems it. Every character that they've thrown in there doesn't seem like a throwaway. It seems like there is a. You can clearly see the purpose of each character. You know, maybe the Mad Hatter sequence, but he's there to kind of throw in the randomness that you're thrown in. You're in. A, you're in a city full of criminals. That is a prison that you mostly put there. So of course, outside of directly related to the plot, there's gonna be some guys that are gonna want payback, like the Riddler. If anybody feels a little weird or forced in, it might be Catwoman, because she, the, game, the game begins with Catwoman, and essentially it ends with Catwoman, too. So after you finish the main uh, storyline, there's a conclusion to the Catwoman storyline. And you play her about four times total, yeah, two times during the campaign, one time before, one time at the end. And, I mean, she has a purpose in the plot to kind of rescue you. She kind of starts off the plot, too, but... That's why I said, if anyone feels like it, I would put her, but... It's still fun. She's actually incredibly fun to play with. Uh, different... And it's not just like a, you know, an old-fashioned palette swap they did. She has different game mechanics. Uh, she has a whip that she uses. That's how she gets around, but it also means she can't glide as far as Batman with his grappling gun. So a lot of times when she does the whip, she uses her claws to kind of climb up parts and you jump up the buildings and such. Of course, she can also walk on walls and stuff, which adds completely different ways of getting around obstacles and, of course, taking down enemies. Uh, the cast... Excellent. Very, a lot of veterans from the show return. Uh, of course, you know, Batman the Animated Series, uh, as well as new people. And I, the only person I'm really with villains, I, they really hit almost everyone in here. The only person I can think of that's not in here 
off the top of my head is uh, is Scarecrow. Maybe they're going to do him in DLC. He was such a big part of the previous one. You would figure he would be involved in all this. But, I mean, maybe he is somewhere and I just missed him. But uh, Scarecrow I did not see. And, oh, yeah, the guy with the... Uh, even though he is mentioned, you find his doll thing, but the ventriloquist guy, I forget his name. He's not in there. Uh, is there much anything else to really talk about? No, I do. Like I said, I will talk more about the plot, but I really don't want to give anything away. I, especially for a game, I know people will, after they put a few hours in, they'll start looking for reviews, see if it, anyone's come across issues. Um, some of those Riddler tro- tro- uh, Riddler trophies will drive you crazy trying to solve them, especially the ones that have multiple parts, uh, the ones you have to step on multiple times. Uh, but inevitably, the longer this game's out, the more guides there's going to be to help solve those, as well as sometimes finding very obscure spots where there's a Riddler trophy located. Uh, I don't know, a lot of the times, I have just happened to luck out and be doing something I normally wouldn't be doing in the game, but for whatever reason, I threw a you know, an ice grenade down in the water somewhere, just, just for shits and giggles to kind of jump onto, and I look to my left, and oh, there's a Riddler trophy. Uh, and of course, the game is also somewhat frustrating, because as you're playing through on the single-player campaign, you're going to see Riddler trophies and other things that you can't quite get to yet, because you don't have all the gear. Uh, perfect example, because this is an early-on one, is... Uh, in the courthouse where Two Face is hooked up, after you even go downstairs, there's Calendar Man who, from what I understand, will start talking about, will basically read your uh, Xbox or PlayStation or computers uh, clock, see what holidays are coming up, and he'll be talking about those holidays. So as the year progresses, coming back and talking about with various holidays with Cal- uh, Calendar Man seems uh, it's a nice little thing to put in. I'll see what he says on Halloween himself. Uh, but there's also a Riddler trophy that at first you can't get to because you don't have the range on your hacking device in order to talk to it. And it's not till way later in the game to where you finally upgrade your hacker hacking machine and then you can finally open it up. And you'll have a bunch... So you have to kind of remember that location. I kind of wish they had a note-taking feature on that map. Uh, just so, you know, you have to remember those, like, okay, this particular trophy in this particular spot, at least it saves the Riddler trophies, because it does kind of know this. Uh, I have to come back here when I'm able to get range. Uh, so that is frustrating, but like I said, at least it saves, where you can save a location for a Riddler trophy on your map, which is a really great thing to have on there. Uh, they also don't have as many of those finding the, uh, the hidden... Riddler question marks. Just a few, but not as many as there was last time, which is very thankful. Uh, what else is there? The gadgets, they've added, like I said before, they've added some great additions. Not only do you start off with basically all the gadgets you had last time, they eliminated one. Like, there's a triple battle ring you no longer have. Uh, I'm trying to think of any others. But uh, you, get a, you get an electric gun this time. That can you can use to shock people, or you can also use to charge uh, either magnets, which which you can use to kind of actually suck, pull away, which is another thing you can do. You can use this magnet to almost like have the uh, guns that people are carrying be pulled away from them, uh, or you can use it to manipulate some things in the environment. There is the disarmor g- device that you can actually use to jam guns or to detonate mines and such. There's the ice grenades and the ice mines, which will freeze people in place, and you can go up at your leisure and kind of take them out. You can also use the ice to, uh, in the water, create a little floating iceberg, and you can then use your grappling hook to get around with that. And uh, I think there's one or two others, but I haven't really used them too much. There's a, there's a lot of options, and for an open world game, that's the key. It really should be open. There shouldn't be... I mean, yes, a game like this, of course... Especially when you're going to go inside buildings, there is kind of only one path to do. But it does still give you a surprisingly diverse way of handling situations. 
Sometimes it forces you and you get annoyed, but sometimes it, it doesn't. Uh, not to mention, of course, there's the Riddler challenge maps, which are basically just the brawl. You're stuck in a location, you have to fight three, four waves of enemies. Um, there, you can go back and play the Catwoman missions over and over again. Uh, you can go back and play a slightly different version of the story mode that's harder. All this stuff. Very fun game. If you haven't picked it up, pick it up. If you're playing it, listen. If you're looking for stuff online, do not have the ending spoiled for you. If you see something with spoilers about the ending of Arkham City, don't go there. It is so worth it realizing this stuff on your own, seeing who gets their come on pings, who doesn't. Really, at the end, there was a lot of characters that died. And some that survived that I would expect to die. It was weird. But I really don't I don't want to ruin anything, and that's probably, I probably said more than I should have back there. Ugh. But, you pick it up if you haven't. Sorry the review couldn't have gotten out sooner. I wanted to wait until I actually finished this one. Have fun, guys. Signing off.